Those who were not here, you have missed. But I request that you get flashes and then you get these messages. Uh, how to relate with the eight groups of people in your church. Yesterday I talked about Engeli Gwengo Musumba Josovolo Kwata Ganamunaba and to Abenja Ulo Abali Mokanisa Yo. We talked about different groups. Amen. Amen. How to relate with them. Engeli Joinza O Kwana Ganamunabio Obo Kwata Ganaburunji Nabio. Now I'm going to talk about treat people as equal. But make the difference clear. Amen. Amen. Pastor work is not easy. And I've been in pastor work for a long time. Uh, but uh, each group they deserve to be treated equally. But according to their age groups. Amen. Amen. So now I'm going to continue with that. In the few seconds I have. Uh, you, if you want to write, you can write. If you want to hear, you can hear. Uh, treat people as equals. But make the difference, differences clear. A good leader must strive to let people feel important. I remember many years ago my boys they used to call our sisters uh, at the home of Jesus Kurujarwa Yesu the, the girls who have delayed to get married that they that they, they are half baked they failed you know they would say jokingly I am not a lady but I would also feel hurt about it until I told them stop calling my ladies uh, half baked people and from that day I give my name, the girls, different street names. Amen. Amen. I look for the, uh, the best name and I give it to her. When you call her by that name for a short while, then you'll see her looking even nice. She will even look very beautiful more than before. And when she's moving, she moves when she's feeling great. Everybody wants to feel important. Amen. Amen. But who will do it? It is you, the leader. A good leader must strive to let people feel important. The reality is that you, you are the leader. So you are different. Now we are going to talk about the five ways to make everyone around you feel important. Because every person wants to feel somebody. And every person God brings in the ministry, they are, they are the greatest assets to you. People they, are mo, uh, people they are more than money. 
Sometimes we value money more than people. But people, they are the greatest asset. All the skills you need, all the giftings, they are in people. So the, 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 the first step is uh, to make everyone feel important. Mingle with all kinds of people. Jesus was with the thieves. Yes, uh, we on the cross at Calvary. The two thieves at the, on the cross. Jesus was the, with the tax collectors like Matthew. Yes, uh, Jesus uh, met the fishermen like Peter. Jesus met uh, foreigners like uh, the lady of uh, Phoenicia woman. Yes, uh, Jesus uh, mingled with the demonized lady Mary Magdalena. Jesus mingled with a madman, a madman of Gadara. Uh, Jesus mingled himself with the priests. Like a Nicodemus. And Jesus mingled himself with the noblemen like Joseph of the Messiah. There was no uh, isolation of the society. Where Jesus didn't interact freely. To not restrict yourself to, to, uh, to one group of the society. This is our big problem in our day. Uh, most men of God. They don't want to interact with the people of lower class. Uh, the poor people, uh, they are nothing to them. Because they mean nothing to them. But Jesus is our model, is our example. You must uh, interact, mingle with all different groups of people. Amen. Amen. Uh, one day, a member of our church fell down in the tr uh, in a trench down there. So you know, Muga Wansi. There is a uh, some spring that flows. And they said, Mrs. Mayanja has fallen by the spring. That's where everybody else was passing. But nobody was mindful of the road that uh, takes people. Uh, so I called on my sons. We, we bought some electricity poles, which were old. I think there were about eight poles. So we went and made up a bridge. But we were, we were working with real drug addicts. We got a good time of working with them to make up a bridge. And now they are very good friends of ours. Amen. Amen. If this idea of downcasting people, I don't know where people got the idea from. I, in the village I have a young man who has wounds all over his body but that young man every time he sees me he comes running and he gives me a hug with his wounds with his stench but I'm his friend anyway Amen. but you may realize that nobody else loves him Amen. 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 Number two. Uh, do not call or describe your staff or subordinates as servants. Abantu bo kozana bo. Abantu bo kozesa. Toba ita badu. 
John 15, 15. Jesus said these words. Henceforth I call you not servants. For the servant knows not what his uh, Lord doeth. But I've called you friends. For all the things I have heard of my father, I have made known unto you. Nobody likes to be called a servant, even if it's the case. Jesus specifically said that he did that call his disciples servants. Do you hear what Jesus said? I no longer call you slaves or servants. Because in those days, slaves were so much at the lower bottom. Yes, and they were considered to be nobodies. But Jesus told them, now you're my friends. You are my friends. Amen. You would find Jesus seated with his disciples. And he was feeding with them. He was drinking with them. He was walking with them. You could not find him distinguishing himself from them. He was inculcating into them something. And you as a leader, what are you planting in your people? Everybody is important and everybody is valuable. Amen. The third point, those people who work below you or the people you work with, you ought to respect them. This is what Jesus said. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Enjoy friendship with the people who work, who work uh, with you or for you. If you didn't have them, you would be very lonely. Many of the ministers often want to be alone. Then afterwards, you will realize that you are lonely. Because you have nobody to share with. Brethren, there is nothing that makes you so different. You are just a normal human being. I use a motto that says, I'm not better than you, neither are you better than me. Amen. I am not better than you, and neither are you better than me. There is no difference. Amen. Maybe God has given us the grace. Now the grace does not make you any so different person. Oh, all you're so special. So that people don't even have to touch you. Or oh, you ought not to have a conversation oh, with them. Or you not, don't need to sit with them. Amen. Amen. There is a preacher who came here one time. And he so much transformed my life. He came and had a crusade at the city square. So I looked at him. But he, would, he came to the crusade and he would move around. And he would find kids by the streets and have a conversation with them. By the time he would be called, he would clear up himself. And you wouldn't ever know that he was the preacher. Then I asked myself, let us wait for what comes next. But when he would get to the platform, he would already be transformed to another person. And the lame would walk. The blind would see. Now for us, there is a way we uplift ourselves. You don't get close to the anointing. Don't even touch the anointing. 
and we frown and do what we do. So we even scare the people who are watching us. Let me tell you. If you really have that anointing like of Jesus, when the woman who had a blood issue when she touched him, what happened? So if the de uh, demonic person touches you, nothing happens. Then I wonder the kind of anointing you're protecting. Because during the times of Jesus, a person with a blood issue that was an abomination. But the other lady touched him. And the blood issue stopped. And so Jesus asked, saying, Somebody has touched me. Then they were, the disciples were asking, What's your problem today? You see there are multitudes of people. They are somehow touching you. But Jesus said, Someone has touched me. Because I feel power has gone out but from me. But man of God. If you're a man of God and people touch you, let power come out of you. Amen. 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 But for us, we think if you touch the man of God when it's getting to the power of it, the power will disappear. The anointing will disappear. I don't know where we picked that from. But I know everybody who touched Jesus, they were also changed. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. Describe the people who work for you as your family. Matthew chapter 12, verse 48 to 50. Matthew chapter Okay. But he, he answered and said to them, and he said to, to one who told him, Who is my mother? Who are my brothers? And he stretched out his hand toward his. Uh, disciples and he said here are my mother and my brothers whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother my sister my mother amen whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother, my sister, my mother. Amen. Amen. The family of God is the biggest family. I often tell the people in this place that the family of Jesus cannot be comparable to the family, that blood family. Because it says, whoever does the will of my father in heaven. So that's my brother. That's my sister. The people who come over here. They cannot differentiate those we work with. Especially with Bishop Dithan. And they all know that she, he is also part of our family by Mama Priscilla. Family. Because we became family. We are brothers, we are sisters. The people with whom we minister, we, we are all related. We are all related. If one has a problem, then the others have to go and help. They can go to the, um, the parents of this person. Amen. Therefore, we ought to create a family spirit in ministry. And everybody loves that. To be a part of your family. Amen. Amen. 
That's why sometimes it's hard for me. When people ask me how many children do you have, then I ask myself, how many can I say I have? That becomes a hurdle for me. Because those who are blood children and uh, spiritual children are all my children. And I love them equally. Amen. Tell your pastors or Judas about yourself and your plans. John 15, verse 15, part B. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant doesn't know what his master is doing, but I've called you friends, for all friends, for all things that I've heard from my father, I have made known to you. So when you share your plans with the people working with you, that draws them closer to you. Most ministers do their things stillfully. You are not clear. You are in the hiding. As if you are a thief. The people you are with do not understand even what you are doing. They don't know what your plans are. They only try to look for you here and there. If people are really your friends, then they ought to know your plans. They ought to know what you are doing. Because they have become a part of you. Amen. Amen. How will you do that? Six ways to make the difference clear. Jesus told his disciples all the time. When you teach someone, you establish the authority to lead them. The authority to lead is found in the ability to feed. Make sure that you teach them. Spend the time with them. Share your vision, your dreams with them. And number two. Jesus sent them out. Jesus sent his disciples to buy food. John chapter 4 verse 8. For his disciples had gone away in the city to buy food. Every time you send someone, you establish the chain of command. You emphasize the chain of command that exists in the structure. Point number three. Bless them. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 7. Hebrews 7, 7. Now beyond all contradictions, the lesser is blessed by the better. I pray for your followers and bless them. There is a, a, a faithful saying that the lesser is blessed of the great, of the greater. Story We all know the story. Isaac had two sons. Do you remember the sons of Isaac? Esau 
But remember the concerns and the troubles of these children began when they were still in the womb. And so it was with Joseph's children. Joseph had two children. But when his father was going to pray, he prayed for the younger one, a blessing. Everybody loves to be blessed. Everybody wants to be encouraged. Avoid a cursing tongue. Some ministers are very good at saying, I am good at cursing. I don't know where you got that kind of thing. I wonder whether it's godly. Jesus told his disciples who he was. The point is, you get a choli. Jesus spoke of himself confidently. He said that he was the way, the truth, and the life. He said that he was the door. He said that he was a good shepherd. There are times I have to declare that I am the leader and the founder of the little church. It is important, it is important for people to know that you, you, you know who you are. Amen. 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 When I go abroad, those people know it. I tell them that I am the bus driver. I tell them the president and founder of my ministry. And I am the president and founder of the ministry. And I tell them if you want to join me, it is okay. It is, if you don't want to join me, that's up to you. You ought to find confidence in yourself. Amen. Many people, they are afraid of themselves. They are so worried. You ought to know yourself and speak clearly who you are. Jesus told his disciples that I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he told them, I am the door. I am the shepherd. Quite often he would talk about himself, who he was. It's not that you want to find pride. But people ought to know who you were. People to know that you're the leader. It's you that the Lord has called. And your vision is not just a mere vision. Amen. We all have one vision. You cannot have a hundred of them. But you have only one vision. And the mission is one. All, all the people who come and join in are only pushing forward that vision and the mission. Amen. Amen. Why is it that many ministries have often broken down? The reason is everybody comes along with their own vision. Once you make a choice to work with someone, Ensure that you follow their vision. You had Pastor Gisagara in the morning. We went to Rwanda. And we did a job. We bought places. In different places. And I told him, Pastor, our job is done. May God bless you. May God keep you safe and be blessed. Because we are not going to stay in Rwanda. Our task that the Lord sent us to do is done. He insisted on us. And he said, no, I want to be a child. I asked him, will you be obedient? Will you be humble? Will you be this and that? And he see you. This is your own country. But will you do A, B, C, D? And he agreed. Amen. 
We are not going to go to Rwanda. Neda. No. And we don't keep an eye on whatever goes on there. But God used us and our part is done. Amen. That is why everywhere we go, once we are done with the work that was sent for us to do, we say we are servants who are not worthy. What God sent us to do is all done. Amen. Amen. The fifth reason, don't be afraid of being different. Jesus rode on a donkey while his disciples walked. Uh, garments were, uh, were laid on the floor for him to walk on. Matthew 27, 28. Tutuseo. Matayo abiri mwemu musambu munana. Matayo musambu abiri mwemu. Matthew 7. Roko 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 And brought the ass and the cow and put on them their clothes, and they set him there on. And, and a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and laid them in the way. What does this verse Teachers accept privileges that are exclusively yours. When you refuse to accept your privileges, you create disorder. The Bible calls this is uh, an evil and error. Amen. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sometimes people come to us and we keep on apologizing. Yes, we also used to do that ignorantly. But now when someone comes, even with a hundred shillings, I don't refuse. If you come with only avocado, I go with that. Why are you refusing privileges? Amen. If it is God who has given it to you, then take it. Ecclesiastes 10.7 Bible, The Bible says there, there is an evil which I have seen under the sun as an error which proceeds from the, from the ruler. For it is set in a great dignity and the rich sit in, low, uh, in lower place. I have seen servants upon horses and the princess walking as servants upon the earth. Amen. If God has raised you in position and he has placed you somewhere and the privileges and blessings, opportunities come your way, use those opportunities because they are godly. Stop behaving as if you're a servant. Uh, don't behave as if you're a beggar. If an opportunity has been granted to you, then use it. Amen. The sixth issue. Uh, allow yourself to be honored. John 12, 3. Then took Mary a pound of ointment, of, uh, ointment very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with the, her hair, and the house was filled with the uh, fragrance of, of the ointment. ointment. Tiao Mariamo Nadida Latiri Yamafuta Agam Gavu Agomu Endo Monji Enyo Naji Siga Kubigelebia Yesu Natanya Ebigelebie Nemvidi Ze Enyumba Nejula Akalosa Akamafuta. Jesus allowed himself to be honored by Mary. 
He permitted the expensive gift that was poured on his feet. We are to if we are to serve God, the person we, we ought to hold on to to study his life and pay attention to it. That is the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because he was the greatest example in everything. Amen. I've got a leader. You as a leader, pray that God may help you to open your eyes so that you can get into the mind of everybody. Because the people that God has given you, they are so different with different thoughts. They understand in their own way. And yet it is you who to help them. So if you don't get into their lives, you are not going to change their lives. Amen. Am I clear to you? If you don't get into the lives of the people you live in, if you don't get into their thoughts, and then you begin to think the way they think, you may find it very hard to change them. Amen. The people in this world who can be exemplary are the politicians. If he is looking for votes, how do they behave? How do they behave? The man could have been moving in a Benz and probably he picks his suits from Europe. But when it comes for time for looking eh? for votes, they come down to the level of the people. We had a man called Sebagala who uh, He went down to Owino market and sat down with the commoners and ate Katogo. And yet there was another one who lost a vote. He was seeking for votes from, with his friend. And then he said, eh, eh, that one is a son of a harlot. Do you know what the other one came when he came to the pulpit, what he said? Eh, ladies and gentlemen, if this is your son, a son of a harlot. I am here. The other one who was talking ill about him thought he had done it, made a point. But that very issue that was <laughs> spoken ill <laughs> is the one which he wanted to get the votes. So he kept not saying, he is your son. And he was saying, yes, it is me they were talking about. And then people began to say, yes, that is our man now. Amen. So be careful of the words that you use while pastoring. People can decide to run away from you. What words do you use? When you are speaking to your congregation, all the people you work with, there are some people who are very sensitive, who are very picky. They are like that grass. Once you touch it, it will all burn. Some of the people that we are pastoring are very sensitive. I was told of a pastor who left this place and went to America. You know those people abroad, they put on short stuff. Now when this pastor got there, he began to speak ill about their wear. And he thought he had preached a lot. But the moment he left the pulpit, 
Then the other pastor there asked him, it seems you don't know why you came here. May God bless you, please. You must understand the people you're dealing with. One pastor one time called me. He first left me and I kept putting on my suit. Then one day he called me to his office. And he asked me, Moses, can't you get ashamed? Then I asked my God, what have I done? Did you see anyone in this church putting on suits? Do you know why you came here or you don't know? The next day I was put like just like them. What he implied was in the area where he was operating, people were fed up of suits and they were no longer coming to church. For us who are always traversing, you must ensure to know the kind of people where you have gone. How do they dress? What do they want? Once you look like them, then you will win their hearts. Amen. Another pastor, pastor told me, we have given you 30 minutes to preach. But it is up to you if you can only use 10 minutes and you give me the rest. If you know what brought you here. You know sometimes they don't also say things very straight. So he was telling me, if you are wise enough, it would be better for you to use only 10 minutes. So for the rest of the minutes, would... you came here looking for money. So don't decide to be, do a lot of preaching and you forget why you came. He will not tell you up front, but he knows why you came. Amen. 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 You need to know the people you're dealing with. Know the people you're pastoring. Amen. Know their finances. Know their incomes. Amen. You, will bring, you may decide to bring that gospel that drains them. And after you have drained everything out of them, then they will come back to you and say, Pastor, my child is very sick. And then you dare make a mistake to pray for them. But all your prayer you will be making will be in vain. We, they are busy saying, we brought you money. Pastor would just get a portion of that money and I take my child to the hospital. Amen. Amen. When I was still a young minister, I learned. I saw that the, the, the congregation or the flock was speaking ill of the tickets they help their pastors with. And I said, if God there gives me an opportunity, I will not come to the church to ask them for tickets. Because that is a way of distracting the believers. Amen. And if God there blesses you, they will keep saying that was our ticket, by the way. When you are with the people, always ensure that you learn them. Amen. That is why we as pastors, you don't have to go out talking about your personal life and problems. There is a, some uh, recording which was sent to me from a church of Uganda pastor. And someone was saying, oh, what to us. They even speak about the mangoes they gave you. Even the house they gave you to sleep in. Because all these were built by the Christians of the church. Amen. Let us learn how we work with others. And the way we treat them. And the way we handle them. Handle everybody as they come. Handle everybody as they come. 
both young and old. Yesterday we saw that let us consider the elderly as mothers. Then the men as fathers. Others handle them as your sisters. Amen. Because sometimes we forget where we came from. All these years and whatever experience you've had, you have also gone through a long process. I don't want you to, to ignore what you have actually gone through. If God has gotten you out of the dust and he, he causes you to sit with the princes and princesses, it doesn't mean that where he got you from, you ignore or forget those people. Amen. Amen. I often tell people, what does it mean to get onto a plane? It is also just a means of transport, like a bicycle. How would you just jump and fly in the air? So when you get onto a plane, it doesn't make you any special person. Or when you traverse nations, that does not make you a different person. Or when God blesses you with money, that does not make you different. You remain a usual normal human being just like anybody else. Amen. Amen. Jesus was able to handle and relate with all sorts of people. He was able to handle the fishermen. He handled the tax collectors. He dealt with the foreigners. He was able to deal with the priests. And even the nobles or officials, he was able to handle them. Today there are people we can call the MPs or the ministers. He knew how to deal with everybody. Everybody at their level. Amen. Handle and deal with people according to their levels. Do not make people's lives difficult. There is a message that Bishop Dithan uh, preached some time back. Bajita simplicity. And it is called a message of simplicity. As a minister, your life must not become a trouble for others. Amen. That is why the Bible says when you go to the market or when they bring you anything to eat, please eat. I will not forget when we had just gone to Bundibujo. Some of my men had not reached that place before. It was a time when the wars had just ended. Then I took these city bonds from Kampala. But I took them knowing what was likely to happen to them. When we got there around that time, I think in the home there were only two saucepans and one benson. In that benson, they were, they were washing the babies. After that, they would wash that benson. They would mingle their food. They put in the same benson. And then these city bonds I had gone with looked in amazement. But I wanted to see what was going to follow. Time for eating came. There weren't enough plates. So they brought our beans. And maize and portion which had been mixed with certain things I didn't know well. I saw my colleagues getting into prayer and fasting. <laughs> Amen. 
But I ate. And I enjoyed my meal. And I told them we are here for a whole week. I will be watching you. You will get hungry. Amen. At around that time, there weren't shops. They were not well prepared. And that was their last time to join me for missions. But for us, we ate. And up to today, we are still serving the Lord. That is why we never find it difficult to go anywhere. We can fit in all lifestyles. Because that's where we've come from. That's where we've come from. We've walked barefooted. We have cut grass. We have built churches. We've gone through it all. Amen. Amen. That person was our teacher. And when God, when our time comes that God has sent us to such places, we enjoy the life. Because God called us. Amen. So as ministers, let us know how to relate and handle people. Handle the fishermen as fishermen. Handle the tax collectors in their status. Handle the prostitutes the way they are. Jesus dealt just with every group. He did not downcast anybody. He did not throw away anyone. But he brought them clothes. Everybody wants to feel that they are valuable. I want you to return after this conference. The people you're working with, the people you're ministering with, whether they're young or old, please value them. A human being is a, one of the greatest assets. Both educated and non-educated. I have people I minister with. They didn't get the opportunity to go to school. But they're so intelligent. They have very brilliant ideas. Amen. And then there are others who go to school. And you want to ask yourself, why did these ones go to school anyway? They have no intellect at all. But they carry their degrees with them. But when they begin to speak, you don't find any value. But treat people the way they are. And you will see the difference and growth. And please welcome the gifts of people. Because to everyone, God has given them something. Amen. We have been told that now we are about 8 billion people on the earth. But everybody is very important. Amen. Every time I sit down and I see what God has worked through people, for everything you see here has been brought up by someone. There is someone God gave an idea. There was a young man who said, who, who was say, a young man who was selling a shop at a shop who told me someone is selling his ideas. That is my good friend. Why don't we buy that screen? Then I said, really? Do you think it will help us? Do you think now it is helping us? Don't cast away people's ideas. When someone brings up an idea, whether they are young, whether they are youth, please accept. Let us stand upon our feet.